He's all we need. Amen? Amen. If you got Jesus, you got everything Amen. that you need. Amen? Amen? So, Lord, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, thank you. for an opportunity to gather around your word. And we pray, Lord, that this word would penetrate our hearts and it would change us, Lord. Yes. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome those that will be tuning in online. We're using our phone this morning because our camera system, yesterday our TVs went out. So the devil's just messing with us. So Jesse got the TVs fixed. Everything was working fine. Comes in this morning, now the camera system's not working. So we got the phone so we can go live and broadcast to those who aren't feeling safe enough to come back to church yet. Amen? Like technology, man. Well, we've been talking about the life. We've been talking, we've been in a series about GPS, God's yes. positioning system. And how sometimes we get off track and God will reroute us. Like that GPS will find the quickest course to get you back on track. Right. Uh, God does this, the Holy Spirit does the same thing in us. And we're looking at the life of Joseph. We started looking at this last week. We're going to continue on this week and we'll finish up with Joseph next week. But because of the actions of others, his life was rerouted. And uh, we shared last week that Joseph was his father's favorite. We talked about the road, and we talked about the favor that he had with his father. And we know because of that, his brother's hearts got hardened, and his brother's hearts were bitter toward him. And we made it a big point, and I hammered it home last week, that we got to make sure our hearts never get hardened towards someone like Joseph's brother's hearts were. Amen. If their hearts were in the right place, this story would have worked out a different way. But they were jealous, they were envious, they, they coveted, and therefore their hearts... We're in a bad place. And we share the passage of Scripture, Proverbs 4.23, to guard your heart, because from it everything flows. Amen. And we talked about last week about uh, implementing some boundaries. Some of us might need to implement some boundaries in our lives to protect us, to, to guard our heart, not allow things to come in and keep messing with our heart. A lot of us will get our life on track, we'll get things on track, and then we don't set the boundaries that we need to. And then we'll, we'll be doing good. We'll be going on track. And we're going to talk about it here in a little while. Then, bam, here comes something to knock us right off our feet again. And if we just set some boundaries and, and to guard our hearts and, and to not allow certain people back in our lives only to a distance and things like that to protect ourselves, Amen. to protect our hearts. We need to do that. We need to guard our hearts because out of it flows. Whatever comes out of this comes from the heart. It's not goes in a man's, what goes in a man's mouth that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of his mouth which comes from the heart. Amen. It's always been a heart thing. He says, I'll give you a, remove the heart of stone, I'll give you a heart of flesh. It's always been a heart thing and it always be, will be a heart thing when it comes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we need to make sure we set boundaries and protect ourselves and guard our hearts. Stacey was right. There's some people rolling up a little late with a time change. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I told her I was shocked we had more folks in the first service than we did today in the second service, but with well, that time change, and Benny Pettit knew that if he wasn't here today, that when I got out of church, I was going to go the long way around Orchard Road because it's blocked off, and I was going to go beat on his door until he answered it because this I slept in was only going to last about one more week, that excuse with Pastor Norm. <laughs> so I'm glad you're here today, Benny. You saved us trouble later on this afternoon. Okay. I was going to come looking for you, brother. But hey, at least he was honest. Amen, amen. I slept in, Pastor, watching it on the on the on the Facebook feed. Right. Yeah. But we're going to get into Genesis chapter thirty-seven, verses eighteen through twenty-eight. And I'm going to, and I'm sure Benny will be he'll bear witness to this that that nap that he's going to take this afternoon, that Sunday evening nap, is going to go so much sweeter. That's right. Because he got up this morning, got ready. He's been working hard, and yeah. he chose to get up and get ready to come down and spend some time with the saints this morning. Amen. It's just going to be a little bit sweeter now. Genesis 37, 18 through 28. But they saw him in the distance, they being his brothers. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Remember last week we talked about the dreams that Joseph had. He had a few dreams and he shared them with his brothers. And those dreams offended his brothers because he said, you're going to bow down to me in the future. And they didn't like that, so they had a little nickname for him, the dreamer. Verse 20, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a furious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Reuben was Joseph's half-brother. Reuben's mother was Leah, who became a wife of Jacob by trick. Remember uh, Jacob went to work for, for his uncle Laban and he said man I'll work seven years for Rachel he fell in love with Rachel 
He said, I'll work seven years for her. If you give me your hand in marriage, David said, all right, seven years and you can have Rachel. But we know after that seven years at that wedding, Joe, uh, he was tricked into marrying Leah. He had that bell on and he married the, the sister. And he woke up the next day and he realized, man, this, this isn't Rachel, this is Leah. I've been tricked. And then he went back to Lady and he said, hey, what happened, man? I, I thought I was marrying the other sister. And he said, look, you worked seven more years for me and you can marry, you can marry Rachel. And we know that he loved her so much that Jacob agreed to work another seven more years for him. And then he married Rachel. Amen. So Reuben was his brother from Leah. They had the same father, but they didn't have the same mother. Jacob loved Rachel so much that he went ahead and said, I'll work seven more years. He ended up working 14 years of marry her. But verse 22, don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him. Reuben said to rescue his brother. Said uh, Reuben said this to rescue his him from the from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ordinate robe he was wearing. And we know his father gave him that robe, and that robe meant leadership, it meant headship, and that's why they were so upset about because he was the youngest, he was only seventeen, and they felt one of them, the older brother, the oldest brother, should have been wearing the robe. And Joseph had that favor, and they were jealous of that. And they threw him, they took it and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Verse 25. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices and balm and myrrh. And they were on their way to, to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. And not lay hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And all that his brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. And we know the brothers went back and they told the lie to their father. They said Joseph had been devoured by an animal. They showed him this robe and some, some blood on it or whatever and, 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 and gave it to his father. And his father believed him. But because of their actions of his brothers, his life got off course. His life was changed in a moment from being a beloved son to being a slave in an unknown land of Egypt. Just like that. Because of the actions of someone else. Life as he knew it was over. He got up to do what his father told him to do. Hey, go check on your brothers and bring me back a report. Just another day for Joseph. But it didn't end up the way he thought it was going to end up. He ended up getting sold into slavery. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And the key word in that verse is due time. Amen. God never exalts anybody until that person is ready for it. Moses was under the hand of the Lord for those 40 years before God used him to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. We talked about that. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. How, how Moses got up as a regular day, 40 years into being a, 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 a shepherd. Sees the burning bush. God used the burning bush to get Moses' attention. And Moses went over then. He got redirected by the Lord right then. This is what I want you to do. Right? Just an average day. We even talked about it a few weeks ago. God's trying to get some of your attention and you keep walking by the burning bushes in your life. Amen. God wants to send you on to do something for him, but you're so busy with what you have going on that you don't even see the burning bush. Amen. Right? Amen. But Moses was out there for 40 years under God's hand. God was preparing him for that 40 years uh, out there before he sent him to deliver those Israelites from Egypt. And Joseph was under God's hand for 13 years before God called him and lifted him to the throne. And we'll, we'll talk about that more next week. God's going to keep you wherever he keeps you for a reason. And wherever you're at, he's going to be doing something in you. Whatever season you are in your life right now, know that God is working and doing something with you. He'll never leave you as we're going to see with Joseph. And if you serve the Lord the way that you should, you should in whatever season, you're going to find favor. No one can take the favor. They're only going to give you favor. We're going to see that with Joseph. But 1 Peter 5.10 said, And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you firm, strong, and steadfast. Amen? The God of grace, right? Our salvation is by grace. 
Or we shouldn't be afraid of anything that God purposes for us. His grace is all we need to get us through, right? James says that, but he gives us more grace, grace upon grace. Paul said that his grace is sufficient. I have this thorn in my flesh that he will not remove from me, but his grace is sufficient. Amen. Right? Paul and them, they laid hands and healed. They did all that stuff. But man, that's one thorn Paul didn't get rid of, but he, this attitude was, Lord God, your grace is sufficient. Knowing that you're walking in the grace of God should be enough, right? And it said, after you have suffered for a little while, he himself will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So we have to remember that whatever we go through is only for a season. And the purpose of that trial is to strengthen you. Like the purpose of this, God used it to strengthen Joseph. God used it to glorify Joseph. Joseph didn't kick the can down the road. He still glorified the Lord in the midst of this. As we're going to see. He himself will restore you and make you strong. You know, I, was, I said in last service, I go to the gym and you've got to shock the muscle. you got to shock your muscle to make it to grow. you got to put it in a position to tear it a little bit, to make it uncomfortable. There's times I'll leave the gym, my arm's cramped. I'll go home and I'll get in the shower and it's like, oh man, it's hard to scrub because I've shocked my muscle. But through that, my muscle's going to grow. Sometimes we get put in positions that, that shock us, right? But through that, we grow. Amen. We Amen. grow. Yes. See, sometimes God has to shock us and get us out of our comfort zone. Amen. There's too many Christians sitting in their comfort zone. Amen. Amen. When they have all these burning bushes in their life that God's trying to get their attention. Hey, I want to use you this way. Amen. Hey, I want you to do something today. Like our, our, our brothers and sisters here from Oklahoma could have very easily missed church today. Oh, we're out of town. But man, they, they found out there's a church service and they're here today. Huh? When I go to Oklahoma, I do the same thing. Me and my wife will go visit little country churches. Amen. There's nothing, no better place to be on Sunday morning than in the house of the Lord on the Lord's Day. Well, we welcome our friends from Oklahoma this morning. Remember I said last week, Jacob had tried to shield Joseph from responsibility of work. But God knew that Joseph could never be ruler until he first became servant. Joseph had the road. When his brothers were 17, we talked about last week, they were out there working. Joseph was more like the foreman. Go check on your brothers and bring me back a report. His, his father tried to shield him. God knows exactly what we need in our life. It doesn't matter if you're a parent trying to shield your child or whatever the case may be. God's going to bring the circumstance in your life. Amen. And through that, he's going to shock you, get you out of your comfort zone and make you grow. Genesis 39, 1-6. Now Joseph had been taken to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, was one of Pharaoh's officials. The captain of the guard bought him from the Ishmaelites who, who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph. So that he prospered. He lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes. And became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of the household. And entrusted him to his care of everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household. And all of that he owned. The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had. Both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was a well-built and handsome. But as you see there in verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Right? No matter what you're going through today as well, I want you to know that the Lord is with you. Amen. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Right? He is with you. You know, I walk through the valley. He is with me. Whatever troubles or problems you have in your life today, just know that the Lord is with you, right? Some of you may be going through something, and I want you to know that the Lord is with you. Whatever the case may be, He is with you. Amen? 1 Samuel 18, 14, and everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. And they're talking about King David there. And I'm here to tell you today, when the Lord is with you, the Lord is with you. It doesn't matter if you're not perfect. It doesn't matter what mistakes you made. It doesn't matter if you're sold into slavery. Amen. When the Lord is with you, he's with you. This, just like the mistakes that David made, the Lord was with him. 
Though we may fall into sin, the Lord is with you. Amen. Right? God doesn't abandon you. Your sin caused you to fall out of fellowship with Him. He's always requested fellowship from you. Even in the garden when they deceived and they ate the fruit, and it was such a simple deception, surely you won't die. That's all the enemy had to do to get them to doubt God's word. And though they ate and they, they realized they were naked and they were ashamed, the Lord went looking for them. God went looking for them for fellowship with them. God's looking for some of you today for fellowship with you. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful. Amen. He is always faithful to forgive and welcome us back into fellowship with Him. Amen? Amen. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And we know God's word tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. It doesn't matter how someone it gets in your life and does whatever. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It doesn't matter who comes against you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It doesn't matter who's trying to keep you down or who's trying to put you down. It doesn't matter what people may say or not say about you. Right? God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I know the plans I have for you, Joseph, declares the Lord. Put your name there. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. God has that same plan for us. Amen. And the trick is to stay focused on God so that we can see the plan. So that the plan may be revealed to us so that we can walk in the plan. Amen. But you have to remember the enemy will do anything that he can to prevent you from this. The enemy did whatever he did today to prevent people from coming to church today. Who I talked to yesterday says, I'm coming to church tomorrow. They had planned on coming to church. Yet they're not here. So that tells me that somehow the enemy weaved his way in with something so simple. Surely you won't die. And they're not here today. But they had intentions on being here today. We have to be careful. We have to stay focused. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Matthew 14, 29 through 30. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Right? When Peter focused on God, he was able to do what God called him to do. He got down out of the boat, right? Walked on water and came to Jesus. But it says, but when he saw. There's always that but. Things were going fine, but. But when he saw the winds and when he saw the wind, when he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on water. But when he took his eyes off, there's that but, right? No. I was planning to go to church, but. I was going to go to Bible study, but. I was going to start tithing, but. I would volunteer for children's church, but. Right? I know no one's guilty of those butts right here, right? Yeah, you disregarded everything. But, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. I want to ask you, Dana, I want you to think about this today. What is the enemy using in your life to cause you fear? What is the enemy using in your life to make you think that the Lord is not with you? I want you to think about that today. How's he getting you to doubt God? What is he using to distracting you from what your eyes are supposed to be on? Because that's what he does and he's very good at it and he never stops. And I want us to be thinking about today that today. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Job 22, 21, submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Think about that. Submit to God and be at peace with Him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Amen. It doesn't say if you don't submit to God, you're, you're going to be at peace with Him. It says submit to God and be at peace. And, and through that peace will come prosperity. So no submission, no peace. No submission, no prosperity. Amen. See, no matter what situation Joseph was in, he was submitted to the Lord. Amen. The Lord was with him. Right? He was able to keep his eyes on the Lord no matter what the circumstance may be. James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. See, we must live a life in submission to God. That's walking in obedience to him. Submit to God and have peace. Be at peace, right? Amen. 
Some of you may not be at peace because you won't submit. Some of us will submit. We'll go so far with the Lord. We'll, we'll submit so far. Uh, there's many that will come to church. I'll do everything. But when it comes to, to giving it, I just can't do that. And the only thing that he challenges us to, in the word says, challenge me in this, test me in this, and see if I can open up the floodgates of heaven. Some of us will go so far, we'll do so much, but we'll stop right there. See, that's not full total submission to God. And there will never be peace. There will never be the prosperity in your life that the Lord has for you until you do that. So you have no peace. You have no prosperity. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Amen. It'll come to you. You won't have to go looking for it. You can be sold into slavery and sold to someone else and prosperity will come to you. That's the favor of God. Amen. That's the favor that God has for all of us in our life. Amen? Thank you, we need that favor in our lives. Amen. We need to keep our eyes on Him so that we can have that favor. Amen. Genesis 39, back to Joseph 3 and 4. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted to his care everything he owned. And I would ask you the question today, do people see that the Lord is with you? It was obvious this master saw that the Lord was with him. And the way that master saw that the Lord was with him, because Joseph never let his circumstances take his eyes off the Lord. No matter what his circumstance was, Joseph was a shining light, a reflection of the Lord. No matter what he had to go through. But from the sister to slavery, he still shined for the Lord. He wasn't discouraged. He knew that the Lord was with him. He knew that he knew that the Lord was with him. And we all know a person that they may be going through something. I see folks walk in the door of this church knowing that all, all heck's breaking loose in their life. And they walk in with a smile on their face. Amen. When you see them, you, you see a reflection of Christ. Amen. You think, man, with all they're going through, they might have got the report that their cancer has spread. Or whatever the case may be, they walk in and they come up with a smile. They, they got their head up, man, and they're just serving the Lord. Amen. And you know that person, the Lord's with that person. Amen. That's the kind of person that Joseph was. And because of, the Lord was with him, folks showed him favor. Joseph found favor in the eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his whole household and entrusted everything to his care. Right? The Lord will have others bless you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Amen. How do you think the Lord blesses people? Amen. He blesses people through other people. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. He's used many people in my life to bless me. Amen. Out of the blue, just bless me. Thank you, right? He might want to use you to bless somebody else. Amen. That's the whole, that's how it works. That's right. What has God laid on your heart for you to do for someone that you just didn't do it? And the Lord wanted to use you because the Lord wanted to bless them. I pray that you always be attentive to the Holy Spirit and allow the Lord to use you, whatever the case may be, Amen. to bless others. Because that's how the Lord blesses people. Yeah, He can do it supernaturally, but He can do it through the body of Christ and through Amen. others. Yes. Amen? Genesis 39, 7 through 10. And after a while, the man, his master's wife took notice of Joseph. And she said, come to bed with me. He refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I. Than I. My master was withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Amen. And though he spoke to, and though she spoke to Joseph day after day, right? Sin's going to come looking for you. Sin kept looking for him. And when he refused it, they kept coming back looking for him, right? Day after day, he refused to go to bed with her and, or even to be with her. That sin came looking for Joseph. Sin's going to come looking for you. And what you need to do is you need to rebuke it. And it might be, you might have to continue to rebuke that thing. Amen. You do what Joseph did and you continue to rebuke that sin because that sin is against the Lord. Our sin is against God. Right? God was testing Joseph. Because if Joseph could not control himself as a servant, 
He could never control others as a ruler. Some of us may be in a testing ground right now. Right now, He could have said, oh, nobody will know. But he didn't. He rebuked it, right? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Right? You've got to submit. He said, how then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? We've got to remember, when we sin, it's against the Lord. Yeah, I may do something to offend my brother, and the scripture says, go to your brother and make, make it right. But I've also sinned against God. And I also got to make sure that I make it right with him. Joseph lived to please God and he made it a point not to gratify the flesh. The enemy's going to always be coming with opportunities for us to gratify this old flesh. Because every time we live to gratify this, we're sinning against God. And we have to do what uh, Romans 13, 14 says, rather clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think how to gratify the desires of the flesh. See, Joseph clothed himself every day. He lived to please God. That's how the master saw that the Lord was with him. Right? Joseph's actions were a reflection of Christ. I want you to be thinking about your actions today. How we act. How do we respond to things? Are they a reflection of Christ? And the great thing about it is if the Lord reveals to you today, well, they're not. When you can get that thing right in your heart right here before you leave. Amen. You can say, Lord, forgive me of this and forgive me of that. Yes. I had a text message from someone today. Uh, that I could have possibly offended a couple years ago. And they text me about something and I said, hey, look, if I offended you, please forgive me. I, I want to ask for your forgiveness. Amen. That was from like two and a half years ago. But I felt that needed to let them know, hey, man, if I did anything, man, I'm sorry. Amen, amen. Because you just don't know. I, I, you know, you just got to make sure, you just got to make sure you're right. It happened to me today. We always got to be looking, and, and when the Lord asks, tells you to do that, the Lord put that on my spirit to do for a reason. Amen. So sometimes maybe we don't feel like we're offensive, but maybe we can be offensive. Amen. And even though we don't feel like we've offended, if we know by the actions of others how others treat you, then you know something's not right. And the scripture says if you know your brother or sister has a problem, and you go to them and make peace with them, right? Amen. The opportunity arose for me to do it today, and I did it. We've got to be looking for those opportunities and moving when the Spirit tells us to move. Amen. Just because we don't intend to offend, any, offend anyone doesn't mean sometimes we don't. We need to make it right. Genesis 39, 11 through 21. One day he went into the house to attend his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hands and he ran out of the house. See, there's going to be times that sin comes looking for you. Oh, look at everything was lined up for that to happen. No servants were around, no nothing. The enemy knows when to strike, right? The scripture says that sin is crouching at your door. Sin is crouching at our door waiting for us to partake in it, right? But you've got to be aware of it. You've got to be on guard. And you've got to find your way out. God says he'll always provide a way out for you. And Joseph's way out right then was out of that cloak and out the door. That's how much he didn't want to sin against the Lord. Verse 13, when she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. Total lie, right? When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him, the Hebrew slave you, you, bought, you brought us came to, be, to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, uh, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while, while Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with him. The Lord's always with you. And showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of of the warden. Can you believe it? Once again, Joseph's rerouted. Once again, the actions of someone else. Has, I mean, Joseph got to this house. He was sold as a slave. Must have been a terrible thing. I'm a slave. Get sold to Potiphar. Hey, well, this ain't so bad, man. I'm in charge of everything. Life's pretty darn good. Things are going great, right? I'm, I'm the second in control. I'm, I'm the head of this thing. Imagine he got comfortable and said, right on. And then, boom, here we go again, right? He was on a good course. 
mercy command of the master. Things were great. Life was good. But because the actions of someone else, Joseph is, re is rerouted again. And I know there's been times in your life or maybe someone that's tuned in your life. You got up back on your feet. Things were going good. Got a little comfortable and boom. There it goes, man. Feet out from under you. You stepped on the banana peel and here we go again. And you think, man, how can this happen again, right? Things happen to will we'll get you off course. You get sideswiped, get knocked off your feet. We gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. We know Joseph handled it the right way because we know, once again, the, the Lord showed him favor, right? But the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 12. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Right? We can't get comfortable in our walk. We gotta always be exercising our spiritual discipline. Some of us get in trouble. We come to the Lord then. And, oh, I'm in trouble again, Lord. And, and the Lord will bail you out of it again. Because the Lord wants to bless you. You submit to God, right? He'll, he'll, he'll be there for you. But then how quickly we turn away. Once we get what we want, right? And we don't keep seeking the Lord. Things are going good. We slack off. And here we are again. When something will come, it'll, just, it'll take you out. We need to be exercising those spiritual disciplines all the time so that if we get in a situation like Joseph, we still represent the Lord to the best of our ability. We still have favor with him. He may knock us down, but we can get right back up. Amen? We all need consistency in our life and in our walk with the Lord. Consistency. Ephesians 5.15 says, Be very careful in how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Right? So there's got to be consistency in our walk with the Lord. There's got to be submission in our walk with the Lord. We've got to be careful in the way that we live. We've got to be careful in the situations that we put ourselves in. We've got to be careful in our surroundings. We've got to be careful in the things that we do and the way that we represent the Lord. Because people are watching. I have had people come to Christ not by anything I said to them, but by me just walking with the Lord day in and day out. Some of my old buddies I used to get uh, high with and drink with and all that stuff back in the day have come to Christ because, man, there's got to be. That's how I came, the founder of this place. My pastor, Mike Johnson, walked with the Lord. I said, man, it's, it's got to be real. Because the things I used to do with that guy weren't from God. And now he's preaching and started a men's home and now he's serving the Lord. He didn't have to say nothing to me. I just watched his walk for about six or seven years. Right, Benny? That's why Benny came. Yeah. Benny came before I came in 2004. Because you see, you see it in this guy's life, man, it's got to be real. My dad came to Christ because he seen my walk. On his porch in Tennessee, confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior all by himself because he was convinced that there was a God. we got to walk that thing out, right? But we got to be wise in how we live. we got to be wise in the things that we do. We can't put ourselves in situations... Some of us can walk into a crack house and pull a friend out and tell them, man, you need to get you some help. So other of us don't have any business going in there because we're just not strong enough yet. But if you seek and serve the Lord long enough, you'll be strong enough one day to go in a bar and drag your buddy off the bar stool and, and take him and get him some help or, or, or those kind of things. Don't put yourself in a situation unless you're able to handle it. Amen? Genesis 39, 21. The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So once again, he sold into slavery to be punished. The Lord was with him, granted him favor. Now he's sent to prison, right, to be punished. And the Lord is with him and grants him favor. Just like in that situation, he glorified God in the situation. Whatever situation you're put in, make sure that you glorify God in the situation. And once again, the Lord granted Joseph favor. God has so much favor that he wants to be pouring out on us that we have that, are, that is ours if we put ourselves in position to receive the favor that he has for us. Proverbs eleven twenty seven. Listen to this. Whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to the one who searches for it. Whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to the one who searches for it. And we know Joseph sought good. We know he refused to sleep with his master's wife. And because of that, the Lord rewarded him. And the Lord will reward you too. No matter what temptation is coming your way, no matter what you're dealing with, it's tax time. Maybe you're tempted to cheat a little bit on them taxes. Don't do it. Amen. Because you may get away with it with IRS, but the Lord knows. Right. And there is no amount of money that IRS can give you that, that's, that's better than the blessing of God in your life. Amen. No amount of money that IRS can give you. Right? Make sure you do the right thing in season, out of season. 
Because the favor of the Lord is more important than any favor this world would ever give you. Amen. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. When I read that, it took me to Psalms 1, verses 1 through 6. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in way of sinners, or take seed in the company of mockers. Joseph is a blessed one, right? He didn't partake in any of that. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Joseph did what was right, and the Lord watched over his way. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous. I'm going to tell you today, and I'm here to tell you today, if you do what's right, the Lord will watch over your way. No weapon formed against you can prosper. It may form. It may come against you, but it will not prosper. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Put your name there. Not plans to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Those are the plans that God has for you. And one way of receiving that blessing from the Lord is to walk with Him. Amen. And do your best to walk with Him and take care of that relationship and nourish that relationship that you have with Him. For I know the plans I have for you. If I had something for you, told you, hey, this is what you've got to do to get it. This is the instructions you've got to follow to get it. Those are the instructions that we've got to follow to have the favor with the Lord. We've got to do our best to walk with Him. The enemy's going to come in and do his best to keep you from walking with the Lord. Do his best to get you to take your right. And he's going to do it when God's called you. Hey, come and do this. Here comes the enemy, man. If he can disrupt what God's called you to do, get you to take your eyes off the Lord, oh man, he's, the enemy's he's happy then, right? we got to stay focused. we got to keep our eyes on the Lord. No matter what we're in, no matter what circumstance or situation that we may be in, the Lord is with us. We got to remember that. Proverbs 16, 7. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he will cause their enemies to make peace with them. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he will cause their enemies to take peace with them. And there's no better example of that in the Bible than Joseph was sold into slavery. His owner had peace with him, put him in position, went to prison to be punished. Peace with him, right? Look at this in Genesis 39, 22. The warden was there to punish Joseph, but instead he blessed him. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison. Look at the favor he has from the Lord. And he was responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Amen. Will prosper you, right? Your niece will never, uh, will always turn green and all that, like Psalm said, right? Will flourish. Success in whatever he did because the Lord was with him, right? Let me see where it's at. Whatever you do will prosper. Whatever situation Joseph got put in, he prospered, right? The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Amen. Oh, how good is it to have the Lord with you? That should encourage us today. Amen. That no matter what we're going through. And I would ask you, is the Lord with you today? Yes. Amen. Is he with you today? Is he pleased with your effort? Because if he is, he'll show you favor just like he Amen. showed us. The case may be some that are tuned in or maybe some sitting here needs to work a little bit harder in that submission to the Lord. But he promises to bless you and take care of you if you do so. If you keep your eyes on him. Amen. That's what we want you to be thinking about today. We're going to ask that you stand. I'm going to open up the altar. We want to thank all those that tuned in online. And we'll be finishing up the story of Joseph next week. The rest of you can stand. If you want to come up front, I'll be praying for folks here at the altar. You got something there, Jesse?